I'm sure you've all heard by now the often used remark on Engage's art direction being to anime. As the aesthetic is compared to the astoundingly popular worldwide phenomenon that is Genshin Impact. And yeah, while it's admittedly easy to make that comparison, and it's something that I myself can see since I play that game. That all said, I'm not someone who is very well versed in anime at all. I generally don't like watching the new anime stuff, and I just don't like watching anime, I guess. I'm especially not that familiar with the evolution of modern, recognizable anime tropes. And I can only really, at the moment, view the evolution of Fire Emblem and anime within the Fire Emblem emblem purview, rather than a more broader understanding of how anime trends have developed over time. In fact, I'm actually writing and reaching out to other way more qualified anime historians for a video explicitly about Fire Emblem's anime influences, which will come later down in Gage's life cycle. So what else can we glean from looks to anime, and is looks to anime even really a bad thing? But first, if you've been supporting my content for a while and you want to support even more, please check out my Patreon link below. Hang out, get behind the scenes videos, exclusive Q&As and Discord chats, and get to know my private community. In case you didn't know, I just moved to cities and it's been straining and expensive to get the essentials, furniture, and so on. So any contribution to help soften the blow of the move would go a long way. I will also be live streaming Engage on my streaming channel, and I stream several times a week. So if you want to catch me live, check out my streaming channel here on YouTube. Now let's get started with the video. If you've seen my content, you may have noticed that I say precedent a lot. Contextually, this has to do with things Fire Emblem has done in its insanely diverse history already, justifying its return in another entry. We haven't seen capture or a good ranking system in Fire Emblem since Fates and Genealogy respectively. I think they are both great ideas and they should come back. So maybe it might be a shock to hear that I don't think Fire Emblem engages substantial pivot to very colorful Moe designs is that big of a deal to me. I mean, it's mostly not that big of a deal to me. Edelgard did not translate that well into this style. I think she looks god-awful, but I think many of the emblem characters look good in this art style. Engage's colorful cast and super pretty environments and dynamic animations are great. That is why I'm fine with the direction, but it's definitely not because Fire Emblem has always been anime. A catch-all statement that oversimplifies the history of Fire Emblem's anime influences, making this art direction fine and immune to criticism. I've never really understood or agreed with this sentiment all that much, and while I've only recently started to work on my Fire Emblem and Anime Influences script, that catch-all defense has become one that I feel is pretty factually wrong in my opinion. Fire Emblem has always maintained some form of realism while adhering to some kind of fantasy anime standard. Katsuyoshi Koya, FE4's artist, and Mayumi Hirota, FE5's artist, designed their characters with this perspective when working for Kaga. The Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War Fan Special Roundtable Discussion was a 1996 interview featuring Shoso Kaga, Fire Emblem's creator, designer, and director, answering questions about FE4. In it, Hijiku Sukamoto, one of the panelists and interviewers, comments on FE4's intentions with regard to fan appeal. Tsukamoto. But I also appreciate how Genealogy of the Holy War doesn't go out of its way just to try and appeal to fans. Kaga. I want to shape this game according to my desires instead of trying to appeal to the fanbase. That said, I also like to watch some popular anime series such as Gundam and Legend of the Galactic Heroes which feature complicated human relationships. Even so, as the game's creator, I tried my best not to push my own trivial interests onto the player too much. While they are still present, I tried to keep them to a minimum. I think I took a huge risk with this game with regard to the emotional attachment to the characters fans would gain while playing the game. But even then, I wanted to shape this game according to my own desires. Desires. I didn't want to sacrifice that for the sake of appealing to the fanbase. We can extrapolate two key points here. Number one, his anime influences are the Gundam series and Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Number two, Kaga did not want to sacrifice gameplay and characters to appeal to fans, but instead to fulfill his own desires. 
Let's start with number one. In the early 90s, what would be some anime influences from either series that he would borrow for his own work? These series embody a lot of that balance that I mentioned above. There are sci-fi animes with dramatic war stories, there are lots of guns and lasers and explosions and different colored hair, but there is a very clear and serious groundedness to it. In either series, many characters are dressed in uniform. Their body and facial proportions resemble real humans. And as for references that Kaga himself pulled, like the shadowy cultist Lopterians who work to resurrect the earth dragon Loptus, led by Manfroy, who operates behind the scenes in Yggdral, Legend of the Galactic Heroes has the Terraists, cultists who operate behind the scenes to re-establish the planet Terra as the center of human civilization. Like the enemy Camus, who becomes Zeke and returns as the masked ally Sirius, there's an enemy character in Mobile Suit Gundam named Char, who returns as the sunglasses-wearing ally Quattro, who mentors the youth in Zeta Gundam, the former show's sequel. Kaga wanted to write a dramatic war story with complicated human relationships, and his influences were dramatic war stories with complicated human relationships. There's, of course, a lot more comparisons to make between Kaga's Fire Emblem and these anime, but this should at least start to paint a picture. In this case, Fire Emblem was influenced by anime because Kaga's influences were anime. But the early Fire Emblem characters weren't made to appeal to popular anime tropes like the Dedes that you often see in anime these days. In fact, hilariously, Kaga didn't even know what a Sundere was until he revealed as much in his developer blog dated in 2008 a character concept memo of a Berwick Saga character. As promised, it was a bit rushed, but I personally like her character. When I was writing this, this, I didn't know the meaning of a tsundere. So if you ask me, Fire Emblem wasn't always following newer anime trends, and it certainly didn't adopt them in its writing or aesthetic for the express purpose to appeal to fans. Kaga did as Kaga does, seemingly whatever the fuck he likes. The balance of being realistic while adhering to standards of anime has, in my opinion, been a common one in Fire Emblem for many, many games. If I had to guess, the huge 180 in art design from the realistic Hirota style of FE5 to the more colorful and cartoonish style of Kaneda's work on FE6 were to appeal to a newer generation of fans on a brand new portable console. But even then, I've always felt that balance was important for the series. The Tellius duology is one of my favorite styles, specifically specifically for that reason. It's like peak balance. The cast is so colorful and pretty and badass and cool and bright, all while maintaining some form of realism in their proportions while being able to tell you a lot about them by what they're wearing, what their facial expression is, and what their pose is. Say what you want about Kurohana's work on Fire Emblem Three Houses and Three Hopes, but I love so many character designs from this game, which, funnily enough, also drew inspiration in its characters from Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Don't get me wrong, I don't religiously follow this balance and have it decide what my favorite and least favorite art styles in the series are, but personally, it does play a role. I can't tell you, at the moment, because I don't know what pop culture or anime influenced the GBA games or the Tellius games, but I do hope I can find an answer eventually in a well-researched Fire Emblem and anime video, but today is not that day. That said, I think we should move past the Fire Emblem has always been anime narrative because it implies that Fire Emblem, from its genesis, always wrote and presented itself with popular anime trends to appeal to fans at the same level as when this argument really started to take off, which in my experience was in Fire Emblem Awakening. I personally think defaulting to this inherently dismissive and incorrect statement to defend any game's art direction isn't a good idea. Whether we're talking Awakening, Fates, Three Houses, or Engage, sometimes people just aren't going to like the art style or character tropes used, and that's perfectly fine. People are allowed to like the things they like and dislike the things they don't. If you're speaking to an old head of Fire Emblem, they might just be partial to the dramatic war story vibe and aesthetic that Kaga wanted, and by contrast, see Engage's art style as the polar opposite of what they want. And that can be difficult to understand as a newer player to the series who hasn't had that same experience and may not understand why some older fans may be disappointed of this new art style. At the same time, being overly pessimistic against or overly defensive for Engage are things I've seen and faced, unfortunately, and it's not fun to be caught up in that either. 
This video was actually the beginning of a longer video about my personal thoughts on Engage's art design as a whole. In that script, I go over the positives and negatives of Engage's art style and characters, and it was only upon realizing after the fact that I think that this was a neat little editorial opportunity in itself, so that's why I wanted to break this up into two videos. Engage releases in three days. I still think I'll release that opinion piece within that time frame anyway, so stay tuned because there might be a another art video about Engage very soon. And if you like this video, please leave a like, as it actually does, in fact, help this video gain more reach to new eyes. My question to you is, where do you personally rank Engage's art style currently? And did you know about Kaga's anime influences? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and supporting me, and as always, deuces.